This here exhibits all the good traits of a Holstein Persian cow. Once you look at it from the back, she has a triangular shape. And with a triangular shape, you look at the udder. It's not meant to go below the ad hoc. It's supposed to go above the hook, which is right above these elbow joints. Now, if you look at her offspring, the offspring has been done by artificial insemination, as you can see with the yellow tag, and she has taken up the mother's traits. And now that literally shows you the continuity of the breed coming in, coming in, and growing. If you're to have such on your farm and you're to have 10 to 20, you are able to get close to 20 to 25 liters per day. If you are having proper genetics and strong pasture management, you are able to have a lovely fragrant like that or a lovely fragrant like this, and you'll have the growth of your herd each and every day. So, as you can see with her stature and with her udder, as we speak right now, her calf has grown, which is the, the daughter right behind me. She has grown and right now she's drying off. However, she has been our biggest milker for a period of now four to five months, literally giving us 16, 17 to 20 liters per day. And this, we're talking about a single milking. So imagine we were milking her twice a day. That would, have, what would literally calculate to 12 liters in the morning and 15 liters in the evening. And that's close to 27 liters per day. A cost of milk in the Luweri district right now is 800 shillings. Why? That's due to the rainy season. But if we're looking at the peak season, which is the sunny season, we see a liter hitting 1,500 shillings per day. 1,500 shillings per day times 27 liters. You're looking at a gross price of 200,000 from a single cow. Imagine you have 10 cows like her breed in your farm. You are looking at making 190, 100 to 100 to $159 per day or $200 per day just only in milk. Dairy farming literally is a very lucrative business and it is very developmental if you have the passion and the love for this. Keep it farming with AIM Agriculture. Wow, guys, it's so beautiful, very beautiful to meet such a young man who is so passionate on farming and to be specific, dairy, dairy farming. farming. Exactly, exactly. He's so passionate. When I had a conversation with Peter, you could you could feel the vibe you know when he could talk about the ai the breeds he has and what he's looking at we've been milking together in the morning yes early in the morning about the, 500 liters exactly on free range i you know it's such numbers are unachievable on free range exactly if you're new to our youtube channel guys kindly do the necessary just hit the subscribe button like and share Remember, our target is to hit 300,000 as soon as possible, as soon as December. Welcome back to another episode of uh, AIM Agriculture at GK Dairy Farm, Luero. So earlier on in the morning and the consequent shows, we had talked about pasture management. And the pasture management, we talked about various types of pasture and hereby we shall be showing you the various types of pasture that we have on the farm that we are using to supplement with our dairy animals. So right behind me is what they call giant panicum grass, locally known in Uganda as mukonzikonzi. If you are to look at the brooms that are used in most homes, they mostly use what they call mukonzikonzi, the broom which has small seeds. However, this grass for dairy animals, since it is quite palatable, high in fiber, and very good in crude protein, having a crude protein percentage of 12.5. And this enables the animals to gain a good live weight and be able to produce milk at a very high speed, at a very uh, high output. So the seeds, how they are planted is the same. Since they're quite small, as seen here, you pour them in sand, 
mix to ration out that is a kilogram per three to four acres put in sand sieve a bit sprinkle all over and then you actually you it's best if you do it in rows to create easy harvesting while giving your dairy animals as we have been watching on the main topic has been pasture management and one of the pastures that has been mentioned the entire time has been Chloris Guyana and finally this is what Chloris Guyana looks like as you can see at the back it is all at my waist height Chloris Guyana is a grass high in fiber high in protein and extremely palatable for the animals this can be harvested at 35 after 35 days or 75 days however you do not need to count the days you just have to look at once it has started putting on the seeds or before seeding that is the best time to cut it either bale to make silage or hand or dry to make hay or cut and offer to your animals live for feeding for forage generally so this is our close Guyana field as you can see it is really wide and vast and all we do is to chop it every evening supplement it on our dairy animals and wait to milk in the morning and have very high output we have gotten a new forage that is taking over uh, the countries in east africa and majorly the dairy farmers and uh, sort of uh, people who like doing silage what you're seeing right behind me is part of the pasture raising farm which is majorly cultivating sugar graze sugar graze is a new kind of uh, it looks like maize but with a way smoother leaf with no pricking like uh, the maize very smooth and very palatable for the animals as you can hear it's called the sugar graze it is quite sweet very easily to very easy for ensiling in silage and it helps increase milk output in case your animals are not picking up in milk let's say you have crosses let's say you have the zebu let's say you have the boran you shall be able to attain your goals if you have sugar graze in your farm however it's best planted in rows as you can see to help in the harvesting period sugar graze will take you two to three months before harvesting and once you cut it from the stalk which is down here it shall automatically regenerate because from down it is wider than the sugar napier it does it can bring close to six stems all at once so you chop offer to your animals they feed it will go back three to two months three to four months you have yourself quality forage for your animals at all times of the year Keep in mind this is very drought resistant so i would greatly advise farmers all over the world east africa africa and wherever you are please plant sugar graze forage right next to me or right behind me what we have is the lab lab on the farm we have got three types of uh, four types of legume plants that are around and as you know legumes take for example beans soya or peas all are extremely high in protein now this is what you would require on your farm to help and you get your animals to gain quite size and uh, gain weight and be able to look really great so the four types that we've got on the farm is the lab lab firstly as you can see we've got alfalfa we've got desmodium we've got lusan and we've got centrosima however we chose the best to showcase right now is the lab lab since it is the highest in crude protein lab lab holds a balance of 15 to 17 percent crude protein as required by the animals it if your plant or if your legume holds a high crude protein percentage which is 20 to 21 percent as seen in uh, the researchers books it would not be really good for the animal however Lab Lab is one of the best as it holds a balance up of 15 to 17 percent crude protein and holds 8 to 9 percent of fiber. Now its harvestation period is right before the flowering stage which right now as you can see 
when the leaves have actually become extremely big and have widened and opened, all you need to do is to collect in a bunch from the stem, hold, chop, either in silage and make silage, or you could feed it direct to the animals, which we would, we would prefer you do as a farmer. However, Lablab can it equally be intercropped. Since we have put it in rows, you could put, put a row of Lablab and then put a row of sugar napia, which is uh, the napia pakshong one. And in this case, you are rest assured of a drought resistant pasture or forage to be able to feed your animals throughout the year, 365 days. Since it takes a period of three weeks or four weeks to mature and you harvest. So each and every time you harvest, harvest, make silage, feed the animals. The next time you want to bug, the crop would have already grown. And you have ensured a strong nutrition composition for your animals. Lab Lab and Napier. What are we going to graze the goats? <laughs> Just seeing them there. <laughs> we are back to the pasture forage and right behind me or right aside me is a matured Napia Pakchong 1 on the farm that we have planted. Uh, brief history of the Napia Pakchong, this is a, a grass that was majorly brought from Thailand by a professor called Pakchong, whereby he merged the pearl millet, which is uh, the Penicitum americum, and he merged it with the Penicitum, uh, Penicitum paperum. So once he merged the two, the pearl millet, pearl millet and penicetum papaperum, which was Napier 1, to create the sugar Napier Paksong 1. As you can see, it has got a very thick stalk compared to the sugar graze. And it, if well propagated with fertilizer and well taken care of as in terms of weeding, and in terms of intercropping with other crops, like the Lab Lab, as I spoke earlier on, you are rest assured of forage throughout the year. However, this is the best forage on, uh, that all farmers have chosen, alongside maize, in carrying out silage. Sugar Napier Pakshong 1 has a crude protein percentage of 11 and 10, between 11 and 10 percent. It is way high in fiber, which it gives the animals energy and uh, encourages them to, let's say, in case you have animals that are doing very long distances under free range, and uh, you've gotten animals that require to drink a lot of water, this is the best kind of forage that I would recommend. However, it takes close to three months to grow, four months to grow. Once it reaches this height, as you can see, this has just been harvested a few moments ago. To be taken for our animals to feed on in the evening before the evening milking and it is quite sweet for the animals so three to four months extremely palatable and extremely easy to get since all that you have to do is get the cuts sold by fellow farmers get the cut put it in the ground add a couple of fertilizer water it a bit and it shall grow to look like this i highly recommend farmers to grow the Napier Pak Chong one.
earlier on when we were talking about setting up for a dairy farm either zero grazing but majorly free range we talked about pasture clearing uh, land clearing if you to notice the grass is in stumps one stump two stump three four count countless stumps it's because we cleared the land first made it flat put stumps of Bracaria mulatto all throughout intercropped it with what they call giant panicum which are these and that is very high in fiber compared to the mulatto which is relatively high in crude protein and that increases the body weight of our heifers right before they are served with semen and right before they are given time to conceive however not only do, does this work on the heifers but equally the drying off animals and the in-calf heifers add the mirror fine fine is uh, fine chrome is brown swiss and intelligent top genetic bulls yes because for the brown swiss we used one of the best which was chrome uh, the characteristics when selecting bulls we look at the height disease resistance the size of the udder and uh, the strength in passing on the gene to the child or to the calf you see that she's she's a twin and uh, her sister is around wow. but the mother has given birth to twins twice and what? that's one of the reasons as to why mm -hmm. you can always look for the cross it's not that we only like the fusions and other genetic compositions mm -hmm. but Twinning. these crosses yeah. equally have a strong genetic composition of, of giving twins wow because like this i've seen in uganda yes at kamata dairies i saw a cow twinning exactly time in life exactly you're here telling me again this is a twin and uh, we shall try and locate her sister uh -huh. but she's around and the mother as well and the mom has given birth to twins twice wow you cannot sell this one uh, no 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 this this is one of our signatures signature cows that has to stay on the farm <laughs> Wow, and this one is uh, a fresh This is a, a pure, right? Yes, this is a pure. Just that usually mm -hmm. these cows, mm -hmm. the fusions that come and the, the semen that we use, mm -hmm. comes with the genetic composition of horns. Mm -hmm. However, as a farm, we like to dehorn the cows since we would want to limit as much injury mm -hmm. and as much losses as possible. Mm -hmm. So once we dehorn the cow, she'll grow without horns and look exactly like this, uh -huh. just with the hair on top and a good look and less injuries once they are trying to play around or okay so you don't love pole we do not you like horns horns right yes love pole and look at this one oh, which breed is this one now that is what they call the saiwal aha saiwal exactly that's why you see she has that rare color is it a cross or it's a pure it's a cross uh -huh. so if you can mix this cross we could saiwal with the boran or the saiwal with the fusion mm -hmm. You get that kind of thick hind legs mm -hmm. and the minimal body at the top mm -hmm. and that is equally good for beef and good for milk wow 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 that's amazing and then this, this wow. is the red fusion the red fusion the red fusion wow it's huge exactly what is the difference between a red fusion how can you differentiate because to me it looks like an ash exactly so it depends the Asha has a smaller stature or body frame, like the Ganzi and the Janzi, the Ganzi and the Jazzy. We mm -hmm. suppose compared to the, fresh, the red version. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Oh, the red version is, is bigger. Than it's the, bigger, it's exactly. Normal. It's only the color. It's only the color. Wow. That differentiates them. I, I love how you dehorn them until they look like they're pulled. We have to dehorn them to minimize any injury on the farm. Wow! Well, look at this one. This is a pure so uh, I think maybe I could show you the Fleck V, uh -huh. which is yeah? this is the semito. Ah, okay, Fleck V. It's, it's always a beautiful animal. Exactly, Very a beautiful. dual purpose animal. Wow, and I can see one with the horns, the young Ancora. Yes, exactly. My favorite as usual. She's called uh, Mayenge. Mayenge. Mayenge Ganyaka Songora. <laughs> <laughs> 
my so we name her then her name and where she has come from okay let's say uh rugabur wabin my songola generally where it has come from or um Mpugaya john where the cow has come from we just name it at the end just before we we, we, we leave we, we end the show yes please one would definitely ask this question peter what is the main challenge that you've encountered as a dairy farmer the main challenge we've encountered uh, the quite a number mm -hmm. uh we've got management Issues. issues. Mm -hmm. We have got um, pastures uh, pricking the eyes of the cows because you know a dairy animal mm -hmm. does not need high-end grass. It needs wow. very low grass. So once the grass is not slashed it could damage the eye and then we have those issues. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the quite... the climatic conditions are not quite favorable since it's either sunny, very sunny, or it's either raining so much like these days. Mm -hmm. the climate so changes. the climate change issue is quite complex but with any issue that comes up you find a way of mitigating it of course sit down get a solution on ground find a way of solving the issue and then moving on if the management issue you're seeing herdsmen not milking on time adopt cameras sure if the herdsmen are not looking after the calves well let's say milking the cows on time um, let's say not medicating or looking through them adapted farm doctor who will do the routine shake so these are quite possible it all depends on being proactive as a farmer being proactive as a youth <coughs> sit down get back on ground look at the problem find a solution and then move on so these are some of the the, 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 the new ways of doing things you exactly in gk as, 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 a youth. as a youth exactly wow now someone is looking at us of course, he would want to start small. Yes. And he's looking at starting with a one cow or two cows. Yes. Your advice on how to go about it? My advice generally is uh, first and foremost, have preparation in ground. Mm -hmm. Prepare the ground? Prepare the ground. Let's say you have a zero grazing unit, you have bought your land. Have you tilled the land? Till the land, plant favorable <coughs> pastures, buy the cow, look at the area, which cow or which genetic composition would fit this land. If I'm buying a cow, uh, let's say in a certain area which is semi-arid in Uganda, the best cow that I would take would be the Ankole cow. If my, favor, if my area is favorable like Fort Porto, there's lots of rain, there's lots of uh, uh, fertile land, I could take the Frisian. Let's say my target is beef or dairy, I'm going to take the dual purpose cow. I'm going to take the Fleck V, I'm going to take the Grilando, I'm going to take the Boran. If my main purpose is purely milk. I'll take the Holstein Frisian, I'll take the Jazzy, I'll take the Ganzi, I'll take uh, the Asher or the Brown Swiss. So what matters before starting the business is sitting down, having a plan, watch shows like AIM Agriculture, possibly. Of course. <laughs> As a must. And learn. Learn, mm -hmm. go on ground, mm -hmm. do what needs to be done and then start progressing slowly. Amazing. Actually, what I'm going to do I'm going to get um, a couple of papers from uh, uh, these four main farms. Of course, I'll get a majority from here. Yes. Being that uh, the climate here is almost the same as home. Exactly. I'll get a heifer from Kamate Dairies. I'll get a heifer from JLV. And I'll get a heifer from RDI. Exactly. And uh, I've never kept cows. And because of most of my friends are cattle keepers, the likes of yeah. Peter and, uh, uh, and, Mark. and Mark. So I'm really trying to learn. Uh, exactly. So that you guys can come and help me set up this thing. Please, please do. It's something that someone can never sit down and have regret in his life. It's something you sit back and say that I made the best decision of my life. Really? And that would be the best decision to rear cows. Beautiful. Some nice therapy. Exactly. Mm. Wow. So guys, it's just said, you prepare get some land or get prepare your feeds if exactly you for zero grazing then i think you get to watch shows what is meaning you gain so much knowledge exactly after you get the knowledge you love to now you love an idea of where you're going or where you're going and where to source the breeds yes and uh, you can even visit because aim agriculture has given you those connections then maybe uh 
Thirdly, maybe now would be to source the animal. Maybe source the animal. Yes, find the paperwork. Uh -huh. source. Very important, guys. You've heard that. The paperwork is what matters most. The paperwork is very important. You could be held for criminal charges and yet you've bought the animal. Yet you've bought the animal. <laughs> sure, yeah. You, why would you be stopped mm -hmm. on the main road just because you didn't have an LC letter, which is so cheap? Ah. A very important thing that I've learned from GK Farm is all the animals are ECF. Vaccinated. Vaccinated. So ensure you're buying an ECF vaccine, Vaccinated especially animal. for such hybrids. You are safe. Is it? Yes, because it would not make sense to come and uh, go to any farm that you see around. It's like buy a cow. You do not know it has been vaccinated. They tell you, you've seen that it is uh, producing well. Mm -hmm. But once you take it to your farm, she picks up ECF. Actually, it's basically it's basically like uh, it's basically like an insurance. An insurance, exactly. It exactly. is. Isn't it? So make sure your cow is insured. Does yeah. <laughs> is it? Exactly. Then buy the animal. And uh, now to be the role of the seller, like to Peter, follow up a GK, to follow up, help you deliver the animal with good means. Exactly. Like the animal should not be very stressed while being transported. And then he'll follow up and guide you. Mm. Start small. You can buy even just a small calf like this. And me, I'll buy this age. Exactly. This and age. this is very good because she right yeah. now is in the more. She's she can easily adapt. To wherever she has been taken compared to taking uh, a heifer that i've sold you that is in calf she'll be pregnant she'll get stressed on the journey so you could buy this take her raise her she gets used to the environment we come and we follow up on what's needed in case you need semen you could either get from kenya where, to, where you are best or you could come to us we could help you get one of the best semen around send an inseminator possibly to help inseminate since and we've, you've seen the process of insemination exactly it's so, so easy even, even quick can do and easy Ex you can do it yourself but you have to, to the follow the training and the steps as seen in the video is the temperature right for the straw have you cut the straw well have the straws been maintained in the nitrogen tank well is the gun well cleaned did you clean the cow before have you followed up have you registered that she was inseminated on this day it's all a process Wow. It's all a process. It's all a process. Exactly. And I think in agriculture, we're looking forward to, you You have to connect us to some of these best sources. Exactly. Of, 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 of semen. Of semen for breeds. I will be looking for an inseminator soon, whom we shall organize for training, and he will be the a, a agriculture farm. Yes, inseminator. Please. Yes, please. I think that's the best way I'll help improve Thank you very much. the community. Thank you very much. That's very good. It was a beautiful show. Thank I can't wait much. to come for my heifers. Exactly. You also can't wait to come for your heifers. And let's see the community grow. Now we are going to the pastures. Yes. And he will show us. So now we have to take them to graze, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll open the gate. You you will push them, right? Mm-hmm.